Hi, we're in the Nanosys suite at uh, International CES, and I'm here with Jason Hartlove. He's the president and CEO of Nanosys. And we're here today uh, talking about a new type of uh, backlighting system for LCDs. And uh, you want to tell us what this is all about? Sure, of course. So uh, when LCDs began to make the move away from CCFL backlighting towards LED backlighting, the initial backlights that were used were red, green, and blue LEDs. And these produced very good results, brightness, good color, etc. Mm -hmm. The problem, of course, was that the green and the red LEDs are not very efficient, and the blue LEDs are quite good. So as a result, the red, green, blue LED system used a lot of power, it create, created a lot of heat, and was generally not favorably received by the industry. So the industry moved towards using so-called white LEDs instead. The problem with a white LED in a display system is that it's what we call a very broad spectral emitter. This means that it doesn't have very highly peaked red or green content. Rather, it has very broad yellow color. And as a result, the ability of the LCD to render color accurately across the entire NTSC color spectrum is compromised by this poor quality backlight. What we have is a very unique phosphor material based on our quantum dot technology, which we integrate into a packaged form factor that easily integrates into LCDs and results in an increase in the color gamut of the LCD by providing specifically red, green, and blue colors at the spectral peaks with the wavelengths that our customers are looking for. Okay, so what you're saying is that you have, uh, you, you'll take a standard blue LED mm -hmm. and you'll place your material in front of it mm -hmm. and that will give you a whole different experience with the color. Absolutely. Okay, so um, give us a little bit of the physics uh, behind this thing. Sure. So most phosphor materials that you see uh, being used in the industry are based on uh, certain crystalline properties of the phosphor materials themselves. Mm -hmm. so one very common one, for example, is a YAG, or yttrium alumina garnet. This uh, phosphor has a certain intrinsic uh, uh, property as far as its photoluminescence is concerned, and that's based upon its atomic structure. Mm -hmm. What we make is a very different kind of phosphor. We make a semiconductor phosphor from group three or group two five or group two six materials rather sorry um, which has unique emitting properties which we can control during the fabrication process so for example what i have here is just a, what we call a little light box demo and this is uh, indium phosphide quantum dot crystals inside of some solution and we're going to stimulate them using a blue or a uv light source and we can see that we can now see that indium phosphide can be made to have a green emission pattern or yellow, my light keeps toggling off, could be made to have a green emission pattern or yellow or orange or even red, all from the same base material. Okay. And so we can control that fabrication process of the phosphor and make those very narrow spectral sources. And by combining multiple ones together, we can, for example, make a, add some green and some red together with the blue to make a perfect red, green, blue backlight light source okay, for so, LCDs. So let's talk a little bit about the manufacturing process. How hard is it to do this with a standard LCD? Yeah, so we generally take the hard part upon ourselves. So mm -hmm. we make the phosphor material using a liquid phase chemistry process, which is a high volume uh, automated synthesis. We take that material and then we combine it with certain polymers and we form it into thin strips. Okay. And those thin strips are then attached to the bottom edge of the light guide panel which is used to illuminate the back side of the LCD. And in this way we eliminate the, the burden on the manufacturer to convert over to this new material. All he has to do is attach our strip of material to the edge of his existing light guide panel and he can get the results that you'll see in the units that we have on display here today. Okay, so uh, we have a, a few tablet computers here and um, 
the difference is stark as far as I can see here. Uh, we'll see how well it comes out on the camera, but it's a much richer color, and um, let's take a look at it. So tell us what we're seeing here. Yes, yeah, so we have a, a 9.7 inch tablet computer, um, we have a, a digital photo frame display, and a number of other displays. Um, the 9.7 inch tablet is, in the uh, one case, we have the uh, standard product as you would be able to buy it today uh, at, the, uh, at the store. And the measure of its color fidelity is what we call percentage of the NTSC spectrum. And the NTSC uh, gamut that we have for this standard product, which sells a lot of units out there in the market, is 38%. This means that this product can reproduce only 38% of the color which is present in the data with any accuracy. That is really, really quite poor when you think about it. So what we've done is we've changed that display's uh, backlight system over to one which uses our technology, and we've more than doubled the color gamut to more than 80% of the NTSC color gamut. And as you can see from looking at these, um, the color gamut difference in the color saturation, the color accuracy is just, is just quite astounding, actually. When we look at the uh, photo frames, um, similarly, we can see that we start off with a product which is uh, available in the market today, having 42% uh, of the NTSC color gamut, and we've been able to improve that to uh, over 60%. Um, this, again, is quite significant in that the quality of the photos being displayed, the facial tones, colors, etc., they're not going to have that washed out look. They're going to have a more natural look. They're going to have the proper amount of red in them rather than just having orange instead of red or yellow instead of green as their dominant colors. So. The first products that we're going to be seeing this show up for consumers is in the smartphone segment. Uh, the 3.2 inch to 4.5 inch displays, uh, such as are very popular in many smartphone models today. And we have a representative sample here from one of our customers, a uh, major display manufacturer. And we see that uh, the existing product that they're making that is used in phones extensively today has about 45% color gamut. And we've, again, changed the backlight system to our quantum dot-based quantum rail system. And we see we are able to render 102% uh, of the NTSC color gamut. And this technology scales well. So although we're going to see it first in mobile phones and smartphone applications, we also have demos here today of 47-inch televisions. 47-inch TV uh, clearly shows a big improvement. Although the display manufacturers work harder to make the colors more accurate with the larger size displays, for example, getting to as high as 72% of the NTSC color gamut on the unit that we have here, uh, again, with our new phosphor backlight system, we're able to achieve 106% of the NTSC color gamut, uh, which means we can render more colors than is actually available in the data set, which means that you know, there's a possibility to expand the color set um, in the standards going forward in the future as well. Okay, now if our viewers want some uh, more information about this, where do they go? Uh, on our website at www.nanosysinc.com, N-A-N-O-S-Y-S-I-N-C.com. Okay, great. Thanks very much, Jason. Thank you.